what Star Trek means to me. Star Trek to me, when I was a kid, I used to love watching Star Trek with Spock and Kirk. Um, and seeing the props and the different costumes and makeup. And I was like, oh, cool. And it kind of inspired me a little bit, you know, because it's, it's, it's very creative. I actually, you know, wanted to be making things. I worked on Star Trek from halfway through the first season of Next Generation, all the way through Enterprise, did First Contact, 17, 18 years working on Star Trek. Steve Horch and myself designed the Mark IX tricorder uh, in somewhere about the middle of DS9, I think it was. We made a prototype of it, sent it off with the prop master to uh, Rick Berman who made a few notes, we changed it, he approved it, and we started making them. The original tricorder for Next Generation was a uh, all resin casting, hollow resin casting, that uh, was actually quite big. Um, and uh, at the time, the batteries were, the batteries for, for that particular uh, uh, tricorder were a, a J cell, which, is, you know, has some power in it, but that particular tricorder had a tendency to last for about maybe 15 minutes of actual on time. And there were a few incidences where, you know, some actors would get very uh, upset about the tricorder failing while they're in their uh, scene and would. Uh, do a touchdown with, with a few of these uh, tricorders. Um, and uh, so subsequently we'd always have to fix them by the next day. My uh, business partner, Steve Horch and I, decided that uh, we were gonna take it upon ourselves to redesign the tricorder um, and try and improve on the electronics. Um, so, one of the people we normally would use uh, during DS9 uh, was George Berger. He uh, came back to us actually early uh, by a day with a circuit board, um, which uh, he would, did some testing uh, earlier that day. And he said, oh, I'm getting at least two hours out of these batteries. So we were ecstatic about that. This is the, the second rendition of the, the tricorder that we made for, uh, for the show. And uh, this is the approved model from Rick Berman. As soon as he gave us the go ahead, we had three days to make six of them, uh, which was, was a feat of magic unto itself. Uh, you know, there's more than enough light in here to make everybody happy. There's movement, there's you know, there's something going on with this tricorder. It's not uh, just a static, a couple of lights blinking here and there. This is actually everything you could think of. Uh, lights everywhere are blinking, moving, so it actually has a function to it. That was one of the major things that uh, Rick Berman wanted to make sure that we had was movement, make it look like it's functioning. At that point, you know, we couldn't put an LCD screen uh, into the piece we started doing burn tests as we were building these. And we were finding that we actually didn't have uh, an hour or two hours worth of burn time on these. We were getting more like eight hours of burn time with full functionality with all the lights. This is one of the pieces that, that I'm actually really proud of because of the fact that it did everything that we wanted it to do in a little tiny box. And, and, and it's actually become one of the most popular tricorders besides the original series tricorder. It's one of those portfolio pieces that, uh, you know, almost a once in a lifetime kind of thing. Our tricorder is, is basically a vacuum body. So what you do is you take the buck and you put it on a vacuum former and you heat up plastic and you pull it or suck it around a the, the tooling. Once it's cooled down to a point, you pop that mold out, that tooling, um, and then you trim off the excess plastic. 
Now to build a tricorder, you need a pretty specific size height of vacuum forming. So you take that piece uh, and put it into a jig that we specially made for trimming these parts. And you take it over to the, the uh, drill press with a cutoff wheel in it. You slowly cut through the plastic with this cutoff wheel, making sure your hands are, are clear of the blade, and slowly rotate the, the uh, jig to trim this piece out. After you've finished trimming this piece out, you're gonna probably go back and clean off any little, little fuzzy bits and so on on the edges. Um, once you've taken, once you've finished trimming this piece and make sure it's, it's, it's ready to go, you're going to move on to making the base plates, which are going to insert onto the bottom of, of the tricorder. That tricorder base plate is laser cut acrylic. So you have an inner ring, an outer ring, and then a door that insets into that outer ring. Um, those are glued together except for the door, and then we also press in um, threaded inserts. So when you're screwing in the screws into the door to close the tricorder, you have a metal on metal thread. Unlike a lot of props, you have a screw and you screw it right into the plastic. Eventually, changing batteries, that thread in plastic will eventually go away because you've overstressed it and it'll fall out. After you've made that part, you're going to take the rings and glue them to your vacuum form part you've trimmed out to the bottom. Once it's glued on, you're going to go back through and secure it with what, what we call dental acrylic or a filler to fill in the little gaps between the, that door piece and the main body. Once that happens, then we will take and start sanding and blending that door closure onto the main body. Once that happens, we'll prime it after we've taped off the clear areas. We'll prime it out and go back with any spot filler to fill in any holes or, or sanding marks that we don't really want. Once that filler is dried, we'll sand it again with a finer sandpaper. We will then go through and reprime it. Once we've looked over the piece and approved that all the parts are nice and clean and ready for, for hero paint, we'll go and spray on a, a car paint, um, which is usually either a lacquer or, or acrylic lacquer. Um, once that paint is done, it's a final paint on it. We'll disassemble and take off the door, off the bottom, and we'll start installing the electronics into the tricorder. Once those electronics are placed, we'll also start placing the graphics over top of those electronics to match up the LEDs that are on the board with the holes in the graphic. Once that happens, the graphics are, will be permanently attached to the body chassis. We'll permanently attach the electronics on the inside of the chassis. Once that's all set and it looks good, we'll put batteries in it, test it. If it's working properly, we'll close it up and we're done. And you'll, you get exactly what you've seen here.